Hey there, it's Susan Pierce Thompson and welcome to the weekly vlog. So this morning I had a morning. Um, I was tootling along doing whatever I was doing. It was pretty early and my uh, mar head of marketing, Lori Lang, um, called me. She's on mountain time, so it was like way early for her. Kind of shocked me, picked up the phone and um, she was she was like audibly upset and um, turns out uh, she had no access to our Facebook account. And um, I got online, we started investigating and it turned out that um, someone or someone's had uh, somehow impersonated someone on the team. And um, uh, even though we use LastPass and two-factor authentication and all this stuff, somehow hacked into our Facebook account, uh, including the main Brightline Eating page and my personal page, Susan Pierce Thompson, the professional Susan Pierce Thompson page, and um, had changed themselves to the owner of it. But of course they had named themselves as Brightline Eating, but with like this weird sinister looking logo. It was like, not us. And um, suddenly they were the owners of the account. And Lori knew this because she'd gotten an email in the middle of the night saying, you are no longer an admin at Brightline Eating. And everyone else on the team had been removed as admins. And um, this like new, uh, scary, horrible hacker person or persons now owned our account. And we had no access, you know, all of our credit cards in there for the Facebook ads and you know, we've got those shut off and looks like they didn't charge anything there, but uh, they still own our account. And um, my professional page isn't there at the moment. I mean, I don't know when you, by the time you watch this, maybe it's back, but if you go into Facebook and look at Susan Pierce Thompson, there's no like Susan Pierce Thompson, author, blah, blah, blah. Now that page is gone. They've hidden it or done something with it. And um, yeah, so that was like upsetting, yo. And um I had a day all ready to do and this um, sort of part of me, maybe you can relate, right? Because, you know, I just described something that's, you know, terrible and outside of my control and like, you know, sort of reminiscent of lots of things these days are terrible and outside of our control. And um, I had a day that I had to live and, and this like part of me didn't want to show up for my day, you know, like, oh, this feels too hard. I don't know if you can relate that sometimes life just feels too hard. It just feels like too much. And what I did was I, I'm so proud of myself that I did this. I don't always succeed at this. Uh, I remembered that I could give myself the permission to have a bunny slipper day. And one of the things I had to do today was shoot this vlog. Um, I already shot the vlog yesterday and the team vetoed it. They said it, the, they didn't, yeah. Uh, I'll probably release that vlog some other time. It was about COVID-19, but they said, Susan, it's too, too soon to be sharing what you were sharing about COVID-19. It's still too raw. Give it time. So that vlog's going in the vault to be released later maybe. And um, I had to shoot a new vlog because Wednesday comes around <laughs> relentlessly once a week, whether I'm ready for it or not. And um, I had this like complicated topic for today and I still hadn't picked out an outfit to wear and God bless me I had the thought you don't have to talk about that complicated topic where you'd have to like memorize a bunch of talking points and really make sure that you hit everything and all the statistics and everything no why don't you talk about how you're taking this day with your bunny slippers on and I um I forget by now what topics I've already covered in the vlog. I've shot some, I don't know, 260, 270, 280 vlogs, 290, I don't know how many vlogs in five plus plus years of shooting vlogs. So I went to our blog site, you know, at brightlineating.com forward slash blog. And um, I typed into the search box, bunny slippers, nothing. I typed the other phrase I like to use a lot for this, uh, which I got from Tal Ben Shahar, uh, maybe he got it from elsewhere, which is um, permission to be human. Typed that in. Nothing. I know I have videos on this stuff in other places. Like I believe in the book I talk about bunny slippers and um, in the boot camp I talk about bunny slippers. I don't know, maybe in the 14 day challenge too, but no vlog on it. And I thought, what an important topic. Oh, my mind was blown that I had never covered that topic. 
it's really one of the um, key ninja skills of Brightline Living. You know, I'm just saying, here I am, this is the outfit. I was like, I'm having a bunny slipper day. I don't need an outfit to shoot the vlog. Who says I need an outfit to shoot the vlog? I'm gonna shoot the vlog in the hoodie I've been wearing all day. That's what I'm gonna shoot the vlog in. And um, I put on earrings that don't even match the hoodie. That was my nod to like fanciness. And uh, I was like, I don't need to do a fancy topic. I'm just gonna do, I'm just gonna do this topic. It just felt perfect. Like I can talk about this today. And I can also talk about how recently, you know, when coronavirus started, I was clinically depressed. I was super, super depressed. I had a depressed winter. I'm gonna talk about that in a future vlog. But um, I started to kind of come out of it a little bit with the springtime. My depression has always been seasonal. I haven't had it in 17 years, but um, it's seasonal when I do get it. And I started to come out of it because of springtime. And then when coronavirus hit, um, I was having quite a dramatic pattern of good day, bad day, good day, bad day. My bad days were horrible, like horrible. And I don't know, maybe you can relate. I mean, when this hit, it was the coronavirus thing. It, I mean, it's a doozy, right? It's like, wait, what is happening with the world and society? And wait, what? I mean, all of us, right? Just sort of um, blinking to make sure that the scene is still there in front of our eyes, right? Trying to figure out what's going on. And um, I had many days, actually every other day, where I couldn't face it and I was crawling into bed because I just couldn't face it. I was just putting the covers over my head and crying and just just like, I can't, I can't deal with this. This is just incredible. This is too intense. And I ended up snapping out of that pattern of good days and bad days. And maybe you heard me talk about this with Everett Considine on the series of webinars we did recently. But if you missed it, I talked on the phone with Everett one night in the wee hours. I couldn't sleep. I don't know if you've had all through this or any time through this challenges sleeping sometimes. I know a lot of people are experiencing that. I couldn't sleep. It was 4.30 in the morning for me. 10.30 at night for him in Maui. And I called Everett and he answered the phone. And I said, I can't sleep. And he ended up walking me through like a five or 10 minute parts work session. So this is a form of coaching where um, you go inside yourself and you find the parts of you that feel whatever way, right? And he said, let's find your horribleizer part, the part of you that um, kind of flips out when it thinks a bad day is brewing and makes it escalate to the point where you have to crawl into bed. He said, let's find that part. If that part looked like something, what would it look like? Can you personify it? Can you turn it into maybe a little character? And I kind of tapped into myself and it was, it was super clear. It was like this little, it looked like Gumby. I don't know, do you know the green uh, rubbery guy Gumby from way back in the day? He was like as tall as a pencil, my little horribleizer part. He kind of looked like Gumby, thin limbs, um, and he had a COVID-19 like fuzzy virus ball head and he was like a, a purplish, purplish color, purplish maroon. And he was screeching at me. He's like, it's going to be a horrible day. You haven't slept. This day is going to be awful. And I said, okay, I found him. I, I, I could see my little guy. He's right over there, like flipping out at me. And Everett said, great. Can you ask him how he's trying to help? There's a point to this. I'm getting back to the the story is dovetailing to bunny slippers any second. So Everett said, ask him how he's trying to help because our parts are always trying to help. So I asked him, I said, how are you trying to help me? And he said, um, basically, he said that, you know, um, like you need to rest. You can't handle all this. This is too much for you. You need to rest. You need to rest. And so I told Everett, I said, he's trying to get me to rest. And Everett said, oh, well, could you ask him, like, instead of turning the day into a horrible day, could you ask him if you just put your bunny slippers on um, and declare it instead of a horrible day, like a bunny slipper day, like a rest and recharge day? Would he be cool with that? Maybe get a few things done that, you know, must get done, but everything else can wait kind of day. And I asked him and the little guy was like, <laughs> okay, okay. And, um, I ended up having a good day that day, even though I hadn't slept a wink. And um, I haven't had a horrible day since. That was um, almost a month ago. And here's what I've noticed. A lot of us, me in the past included, I haven't picked up food addictively in a while now, but in the past, 
for uh, many of the rockiest years where I was building the Sprite Line Eating movement thing, um, many of us pick up the food because a part of us thinks it's the only way to get us to rest, to take a load off, to let some relief wash over us. And I'm noticing in my life how powerful it is, like today, for me to allow myself to take a load off, to have a bunny slipper day, without uh, any excess food in the mix. I don't need to eat to take a load off. A bubble bath will do it. Staying in my, you know, hoodie and pink flannel jammies. Pink flannel jammies, yay! I don't know if those will show. I'm not that flexible. <laughs> anyway, love my pink flannel jammies. Wear them. Every day these days, funny enough. Reading a book will do it. A cup of herbal tea will do it. Snuggling with a pet will do it. You know, there's a, lot, a nice long walk will do it. There's lots of ways to take a load off without eating. And having a bunny slipper day is a state of mind. You can kind of move slow through even the busiest day. Even a first responder, crazy intense kind of day can be a bunny slipper day with a shift in your perspective toward the day. And funny enough, sometimes our bunny slipper days end up being the most productive because we're so calm and so focused. There's no need to rush. I feel like it's just a nice time for us to remind ourselves that um, there's a lot of extra stress on board, even if the coronavirus crisis isn't hitting us personally super, super hard, even if we're thriving through it, even if it's turning out to be a beautiful respite, right? Um, still, still, the enormity of the unusualness of this time is in the mix, it's in the air. And for many of us who are, you know, following along closely of what's going on, it's it's pretty bad, you know, the, the um, extra load of the weight of this time. And so it's a really good time to remember bunny slippers, to remember that we're only human. And I'm curious, I'm curious, if your food isn't on point right now, if your food's not bright, um, I'm curious, what would happen if you got curious about how much of that extra eating is really about some part of you feeling like you need to take a load off, you need some relief, you need some rest, you need some relaxation. Things that are, I would argue, potentially, if you look at it, maybe better served, you know, with other conduits, vehicles, medi mediums, media, right, than food right? Food is not necessarily um, inherently the most relaxing or rejuvenative thing, right? Eating isn't necessarily the activity that makes you whew, let down the best. Maybe it is, in which case then you got to find a sufficient substitute. You know, you got to work really hard to find the next best. But what I found is um, food wasn't for me, the um, best in the sense of it didn't really fill my tank. Because for me, when I eat addictively, the consequences are enormous. It really isn't worth it. It doesn't fill my tank. For me, you know, eating a beautiful, abundant, big salad, bright line dinner, going to bed early, um, journaling a little bit, reading a good book, turning out the lights super early, like that's what actually fills my tank. That's where the next day I'm gonna feel filled up. However, for me, food for, for many months and years, I would say, especially during the heyday of building Bright Line Eating, I wouldn't let myself rest unless I was binging. And I'm just being honest. I would almost never actually stop and rest unless I was collapsing on the couch with a bowl of cookie dough. Like that was it. I wouldn't, there was too much to do and I was too balls to the wall running with it. So now, um, 
I guess I seem to have learned the lesson that a bunny slipper day is actually like exactly the gift that I need. And maybe you do too. I'm just guessing. I don't know. Maybe not. But I thought I'd offer it because it's what came alive today. And the fact that we don't have any vlogs called <laughs> bunny slippers or permission to be human is just shockingly inappropriate. So we have now rectified that situation. <sighs> I love you. And that's the weekly vlog. I'll see you next week.